We're at the EAA Air Ventures Oshkosh event. We're in the Innovation Showcase. You're at the opener booth, and this is the Black Fly vehicle behind us. We're really proud that we're donating a vehicle to the EAA Museum. The vehicle is Black Fly 12, which is one of the series of the first manned autonomous vehicles that we built. So we'll be on display uh, all week here at EAA's Air Venture in the Innovation Showcase. And then in August, it'll be uh, displayed uh, in the museum at the EAA. And it doesn't look like an airplane or a helicopter. What is it? This is an electric personal air vehicle. Um, I've joined the team two months ago as their new president with our founder, Marcus Ling, who invented the design. And this is our uh, third generation of it. And this is the one that we're working on. To, uh, we're ramping up for production we'll, to produce 100 vehicles that we'll sell to the public. The first aircraft uh, was built in the, the basement of my home, just outside of Fort Worth. Um, we really didn't give it a name because it was just a proof of concept vehicle. And uh, it was made with uh, very simple materials, uh, uh, styrofoam from Home Depot and carbon composite uh, that was purchased uh, from a boat uh, supply uh, outfit and uh, bamboo chopsticks to basically hold the wings onto the fuselage. Um, the motors were off the shelf um, and they were heavily modified uh, for the vehicle because they didn't have the performance requirement uh, to actually make the vehicle functional. The batteries were uh, purchased in the United States. They were very expensive at that time. Um, and the control system was uh, designed and built by myself and uh, programmed by myself as well. We basically spent uh, a couple weeks uh, tuning the aircraft uh, while it was uh, locked in place uh, on a trailer. And uh, once we got the tuning set, uh, we then began doing <clears throat> manned flights uh, to do further testing. And then on October 5th of 2011, we conducted our first uh, manned flight. And uh, uh, the results of that were um, excellent controllability. And the very first aircraft had no redundancy of any sort. So it was a relatively high risky aircraft to fly. So we didn't really fly very high above the ground, basically a little bit over a meter. And uh, at the end of that flight, the proof of concept was proven. So that aircraft was retired at that point. What we did was the, the day after the, the first flight uh, of the proof of concept vehicle, we actually went down to the Bahamas and met up with uh, friends of ours. And um, we basically uh, did a business plan at that point. And uh, part of that business plan was to, in fact, uh, operate in stealth mode. Uh, we relocated from the basement of my house um, and also my kitchen and my dining room and living room uh, to um, an office space um, in Coburg, Ontario. And there we designed and built um, a vehicle that we called a strutted vehicle. That vehicle that we constructed in that office space um, did one flight hover flight uh, in the back of the uh, facility um, and then we relocated down to California. And what we did um, is we then developed uh, the aircraft design that you see behind us here, which is the version two. And uh, we built 12 aircraft in this series and the last two were uh, designed to be operated by, uh, by human operators. Wow. Who would be interested in something like this? Well, we hope anyone would be interested. Anyone that loves to fly, anyone that's interested in an efficient, short uh, commute. And so we would sell this in the ultralight category um, and operate it under that uh, rule set as, uh, and then work with uh, the training, train the pilots to fly the vehicle, the unique configuration, and open it up to anyone. What could someone do with an aircraft that looks like this? This is the type of airplane where you can, or air vehicle where you can walk out your front door hop in it, punch the button, fly, commute to work, land next to your office, walk in or take a vacation or go see the countryside. Anything you want to do, electric, personal air vehicle, um, coming, coming to us. And it, it doesn't have wheels, it doesn't have skids. So how, how does it fly? How does it work? Okay, so the configuration is a all composite airframe. It has eight propulsors, electric motors, elect uh, battery with electric motor motors, 
it um, takes off vertically and lands vertically, and then it translates in the air to, to fly forward flight using the wings. So it's a biplane, and so it, those wings get the air over, fly as a conventional uh, airplane, and then it transitions to the hover uh, and flies on the propellers to land and take off. You're saying it could be both a commuter vehicle or a recreational vehicle. What kind of recreational use would you have for something like this? Where could you land it? Where could you, where could you use it? So you can land this virtually anywhere. You just need this uh, space uh, that's big enough, like the, the, the space that we have here in the convention, where you can put the airplane down uh, free of power lines, free of obstacles, and then take it off. So you could, uh, you could land at work. You could land in the country, a grass, paved, or even in, on, in the land. It's uh, certified under the ultra, or it's uh, ultralight uh, amphibious vehicle, so you can land in the water as well. Oh, you can land in the water as well. Okay. And, and how far could you travel with an aircraft like this? So the ultralight category has a restriction of 26 miles, so we can go that full distance. The vehicle's capable of multiples of that. As in the ultralight category, that's, that's what we're doing today, 26 miles. At about 62 miles an hour is the top speed. And then, the, like I said, the vehicle's capable of more than that. So as we uh, work with the regulators, we'll be able to open up the full capability of the vehicle. Well, I noticed that on some of your specifications, you have a US FAA configuration and you have an international configuration, well, Canada being one of the markets. So in Canada, you could do something different? Yeah, so the regulatory environment in Canada is slightly different than in the US, so that's correct. We can go a little bit faster and a little bit further. We're walking around this aircraft, I, I see, tell me some of the features of this, if it we're on the showroom floor, tell me about the airplane and what, what I'm seeing here. Yeah, so this is an all composite airframe. It's a very modular design, the wings come off, you can put them in a trailer, transport the vehicle, put the, reassemble the wings, it takes about 30 minutes to unassemble and reassemble the vehicle. It's modular in the sense that each of the propulsion units the propeller, motor, and battery combination can be removed and replaced. There, it also, you can lose a cell or a quadrant and then uh, continue to fly. As far as redundancy, we have three flight control computers. It's a triple redundant system. And then with the actual hardware on the propulsors, you also have that redundant. And you can fly with one engine and operative or a scenario? You can fly with one engine and operative or even a quadrant, two engines on one side out. I'd like to think nothing about this is traditional. Okay. We're trying to reinvent how we approach aerospace, how we approach aviation and personal air vehicles. Um, so if you look at each element, you can see some convention, for example, the two wings like a biplane. You also see in the, as it's vertical takeoff and landing, you see the, some of the convention of a helicopter. Uh, in forward flight, some of the handling qualities like an airplane, but you, it's really a unique design. You can fly high or low. Right slower fast it's very rapid response um, it's a pleasure to fly so you mentioned that you're actually building this aircraft now the company we're ramping up to production we're in the process of building our first hundred vehicles that we're going to sell and uh, that's uh, why we're here at the air show is to show it to the public to meet people like you uh, to meet future employees to help us grow the company and develop the vehicle are you taking orders now we're not taking orders now. We'd like to continue the development, and then once we're ready to sell, we'll go ahead and take those orders and then deliver the vehicles. Now, in order to fly this, what kind of qualifications do you have to have? Do you have to be a, a helicopter pilot, a fixed-wing pilot, both, a seaplane pilot? What, what, what do you need to have in the way of skills or licenses to fly something like this? So the ultralight category allows us to get lots of people into the vehicle. We would like to do a one-day training with anyone we put in the vehicle, and we will train them how to fly. It is a, it's an autonomous vehicle, so you have the computers helping you fly, so it really opens up who can fly it with the idea being anyone can get. We'll initially um, like to have pilots fly with us as well as others that are non-pilots. So a non-pilot could fly this after how much training? Non-pilots can fly this. We would like to bring them in. It's about a day training that we're envisioning so to get them familiar day, get, with the vehicle. And because of the autonomy of it, they can fly in the vehicle. After a day? Approximately. Wow. And do you have a, a sense of how much something like this would cost? I mean, I, I, I'm, I know you're not yeah. selling it now, but what kind of price range are we looking at? We'd like to sell this for the price of a, an, an SUV, ultimately. OK. 
Okay, which is a bit of a, a range span, but that certainly, yeah, it is. there's lots of people who own SUVs. Um, so tell us- That a gives you a rough idea. This is an, a vehicle that we want to be able to sell to everyone. The initial vehicle took off and landed vertically. Then we built a vehicle to focus on the transition. Then we built a series of vehicles focusing on the control systems, which then led to our vehicle number two. Vehicle number two was the combination of all of that. So we had the vertical takeoff and landing, as well as the transitions, the autonomous control. And then that was our pre-production production model, which then led to this uh, production model. And so how is the V3 different from, say, the V2? On V3 versus th V2, we've respun the avionics, the control systems, used all the lessons that we've learned out of the testing. We've, test we've had 26,000 flight tests. Uh, we've flown the aircraft over 23,000 miles. And so all those lessons learned went into refinements to make the flight controls and the structure more robust, safer, and, and ready for production. Can you talk a little bit more about the safety aspects of the aircraft and also the testing that you're doing to achieve those safety uh, and that redundancy? Yeah, absolutely. So as far as safety, I mean, that's the driving number one priority behind everything we do. This has to be a uh, safe vehicle for any, for if we want to have everyone operate it. So with the version three, uh, designed for manufacturability and the upgrade uh, of the flight control systems and the other systems. So that means now we are going back and doing testing now, that's regression testing in some sense, to validate all those changes to make sure that we've gotten the result that we wanted out of those upgrades, that we have a robust system that um, we'll be happy entering, uh, that we'll be satisfied that as we enter the market space with it, that it'll perform um, safely for everyone. In addition to that, we've also um, put a ballistic parachute in the design, and we will be testing um, that parachute uh, deployment and the recovery of the vehicle with that, um, so that we have that added assurance uh, in, the, in, the, in the delivery. We'd like anyone to be able to fly this autonomously, commercially, in an urban area, in a rural area, and so we're putting all the performance and the technology into that so that as the regulatory environment um, allows that kind of operation, we'll be ready to go. So we test in multiple locations as appropriate to the test that we're doing and in uh, compliance with the regulatory environment for the test that we're doing, be it manned or unmanned. Okay. We've been, we're vertically integrated, so everything that we, we have de designed and developed in-house, and then uh, we carefully source some of our parts, like the, for many of our parts. Coming out of the development phase, we're growing, we're hiring, we need to hire more engineers, and we need to also, we are hiring another functions as well and other business functions to really take the company to the next level.